so here is part two of the acid base pH notes. We just left off at doing pH and pOH calculations, and now we are going to talk about indicators. An indicator is any compound, any substance, anywhere whose color is sensitive to pH. If it changes at a high pH, then it's an indicator for a base. If the, if the substance changes at a low pH, then it's an indicator for an acid. And it can be anything. Um, mostly in, in the classroom, you will use like phenolphthalein or bromethymol blue. Um, and then of course we've used universal indicator. But in the real world, cabbage, purple cabbage is a great pH indicator. Um, you can also use uh, mustard. Mustard can indicate whether or not you're dealing with a base. It changes um, from the yellow, typical mustard color to a red color at high pHs. Um, and the pH range over which an indicator changes is called a very, very tricky wording, transition interval. The range over which it changes. I told you guys chemists are not real creative when it comes to naming stuff. So, um, the, the indicator that's in mustard is called turmeric, and it changes around a pH of like 9, and so the pH range of turmeric is going to be right around 9, probably 8.5 to 9.5. Uh, phenolphthalein has a similar range. I think it might be a little bit higher. Bromethymol blue has a pH range of like 4.5 to 5.5, where it changes color there. Um, you can Google search pH indicators and find just poster after poster of indicators, and I'm sure you've got one hanging in your chemistry lab, wherever it is that you go to school. Um, so what is something that we can use pH for, besides just figuring out if something is an acid or base, which on its own is pretty important? Well, we can use them for something called a titration. And what a titration is, is determining the pH of an unknown solution to a very high precision using the pH of a known solution. Titrations are tedious work. They take a really long time and you have to have amazing lab technique to get really good results from it. In our class, we are going to do what's called a microscale titration. And so it's not as important that your technique is just flawless, but it is still important to have good technique. And you will definitely want to make sure that you look over the pre-lab for that. Um, basically, all you do is you add small amounts of the known solution to the unknown solution until some predetermined endpoint is reached. Usually you add an indicator and at the split second where the indicator just begins to change color, that's when you're done and that's what you call your end point. We'll talk more about what a titration is in class when we're doing our little micro scale titration lab. But this is an absolutely fantastic formula that you can use to figure out the molarity of your unknown substance by doing a titration. And basically all it is, is you take the number, of, uh, the number of hydrogens in your acid formula, multiply it by the molarity of the acid, the little subscript A just means acid, and multiply it by the volume that you ended up using. And that's going to be equal to the number of hydroxides in the base formula, or how many hydroxides the base would produce, times the molarity, whoops, sorry, times the molarity of the base times the volume of the base. And all that you have to do is make sure that your molarity units match up, which they should. They should all be moles per liter. And you have to make sure that your volume units measure up so that can it doesn't matter if these guys are in liters, just as long as the volume of the acid and the volume of the base have the same units. So let's do an example, shall we? You have 50 drops. Yes, a drop can count as a unit of volume measure. It's not a very accurate one, mind you, but it works for this. You have 50 drops of acetic acid, and it takes five drops of five molar NaOH to reach the endpoint. What is the molarity of the acetic acid? So setting up our little guess method, number of hydrogens, the molarity of the acid, the volume of the acid, the number of hydroxides, the molarity of the base, and the volume of the base. So how many hydrogens are we going to get out of acetic hydrogen or acetic acid? You might be going, okay, well there's one here, there's three here, so I must be getting out four hydrogens. But what you got to remember 
is that this guy right here is the acetate polyatomic ion, and this is actually the only acidic hydrogen that you have. So acetic acid only has one acidic hydrogen. I have to make sure to enunciate. This is acetic acid, which is acidic. Um, and it takes five drops, so my volume is five drops. Um, oh, sorry, whoa, that's 50 drops of the acid, my bad. And then the molarity of the acid, it says, what is the molarity of the acid? So I don't know. And the number of hydroxides, well, we have sodium hydroxide. I only see one hydroxide there, so one. The molarity of the base, well, it says it's five molar. The volume of the base was five drops. And so the molarity of the acid is going to be equal to the number of hydrogen hydroxides times the molarity of the base times the volume of the base divided by the number of hydrogens times the volume of the acid. So now I just got to plug in my numbers. Well, my hydroxide was one. My molarity of the base was five. My volume of the base was five. Divide that by the number of hydrogens, which was also one, and the volume of the acid, which is 50. And I end up with 25 over 50, which means I have a molarity of 0 0.5, looks like we're only allowed one sig fig, 0 0.5 molar. Second example, what is the molarity of sulfuric acid if it takes 12 mils of H2SO4 to neutralize 30 mils of the 5 molar sodium hydroxide? So setting up the exact same thing again, number of hydrogens, volume of the acid, molarity of the acid, number of hydroxides, volume of the base, and molarity of the base. So the number of hydroxides in what is the molarity of sulfuric acid? Well, I look at sulfuric acid, I see it has two hydrogens. The volume of acid, it took, it, it took, it takes 12 mils of H2SO4. So volume is 12 milliliters of the acid. And it says, what is the molarity of? So I don't know my molarity of the acid. Number of hydroxides. Well, we're using sodium hydroxide again, so we only have one hydroxide. The volume of the base is 30 mils. And the molarity of the base, it's that same 5 molar. So same setup, the molarity of the acid is equal to the number of hydroxides. I'm afraid the school bell's going to ring in just a second. So if it does, I sincerely apologize, but I'm not making this video over. Um, so the number of hydroxides times the volume of the base times the molarity of the base divided by the number of hydrogens times the volume of the acid. And just to plug those numbers in, number of hydroxides was 1, the volume of the base was 30, the molarity of the base is 5, the number of hydrogens is 2, and the volume of the acid is 12. And so this works out, 30 times 5 is 150. 2 times 12 is 24, and 150 divided by 24 is 6.25. So the molarity of our acid is 6.25 molar. And hey, look at that. I made it before the bell. You guys have an excellent rest of your day or evening, depending on when you're watching this. And if you have any questions, you know how to ask.